that results in the inflammation to spread to the medullary spaces and involving the bone okay now the cause for this or the most common cause for this is dental infection as the line itself suggests periapical infections that is mainly your abscess okay so abscess or your periapical infections are the main cause for acute separative osteomyelitis okay also nevertheless or the less common causes may include granuloma or cyst formation if these are also not walled off or they if they are walled off or they are not treated or they are not drained then they may also lead to acute separative osteomyelitis also it is a polymicrobial infection polymicrobial as in it involves many organisms or many organisms can be isolated from acute separative osteomyelitis so the most common ones being your staphylococcus aureus staphylococcus uh, albus and various or varieties of streptococci also in the anaerobes like your bacterioids prevotella and porphyromonas may also be predominant factors or predominant microbial infections okay moving to the clinical features so like this does not have any such predilection like it is more common in females or this age group or this site but here it may involve either of maxilla or the mandible if it involves the maxilla then the the infection or this acute separative osteomyelitis it is fairly localized to the site of initial infection and if it involves mandible then it is the involvement is diffuse and widespread also it it can occur at any age so a particular type of osteomyelitis is there which occurs in infants and your young children which is known as neonatal maxillitis which can be either hematogenous in origin or may also be because of local uh, oral infections may that, which may be caused due to any kind of minor injury trauma or abrasions also when it is afflicted in adults then you see the symptoms as severe pain trismus that is again your uh, what you say spasm of your uh, jaw or you say the joint uh, pain in the um, this uh, joint jaw joint paresthesia of the lips that is nothing but the tingling sensations or that pricking needle sensation happening to your lips increased temperature and regional lymphadenopathy these three are seen if mandible is involved also there is obviously it's a kind of uh, inflammation or infection so there is going to be raised wbc count tooth in the area of infection are loose and sore okay the tooth in the area of involvement are loose and sore so there is difficulty in eating definitely because if the tooth are in constant mobility the person is not able to eat also the pus may extrude from the gingival margins okay moving to the radiographic features what you see is actually the radiographic features are not evident when there is initial occurrence of acute separative osteomyelitis when it remains for one to two weeks then the radiographic features are seen as more evident and what they are seen is diffuse lytic changes in the bone okay lytic as in your destructive changes in the bone individual trabecula becomes fuzzy and indistinct now as you see on a normal radiograph you see the trabeculates are well they have you know well radio opaque margins and everything okay so they become fuzzy and indistinct because they are filled with your pus because acute separated so this is obviously related to pus because they are filled with pus and everything so they becomes fuzzy that is they becomes blur out the margins are not clear they are not easily uh, distinguishable and radio lucent areas begin to appear which was radio opaque earlier the trabecular lines now these appear because they are filled with pus so they start appearing radio lucent on to the histological features so the medullary spaces as you know that acute separative osteomyelitis spreads through the medullary spaces to involve the whole bone so it's definitely it is obvious that medullary spaces will be filled by the inflammatory exudate and the chief cells or the chief inflammatory cells would be your pmn that is your polymorphonuclear leukocytes and occasionally they may be your lymphocytes or the plasma cells also the osteoblasts that border the bony trabeculae or that the, which are present at the rim of the trabeculae they may be destroyed and in severe cases these trabeculae may lose their viability and they may show severe resorption of the bone okay moving to the treatment so the general principle as you see throughout the disease job dekh ke bol sakte ho that is simply your debridement drainage and antimicrobial therapy so you give your antimicrobial drugs and you uh, provide debridement and drainage okay but if the disease intensifies or the disease it has high intensity so what thing you see is there is sequestrum formation now what is the sequestrum this sequestrum is nothing but the necrosis bone as we have learned in the pathology कि नेक्रोसिस हो जाता है बोन का सो दैट नेक्रोस्ड बोन इज एक्चुअली नोन एज सिक्वेस्ट्रम 
and when uh, around this necrose bone new bone starts forming it's known as involucrum so these two terms you have to remember that the necrose bone is known as sequestrum and the, around this sequestrum when this around this necrose bone when new bone starts forming that is known as involucrum so disease intensified disease intensified kaise hogi jab aapka sequestrum it starts to separate from the living or the vital bone so the necrose bone it starts to separate okay it starts to make its way away from the living or the vital bone okay so us time pe matlab aapko dikh raha hai ki disease is itne intensified state mein hai so if the sequestrum is small so it gradually exfoliates from the mucosa matlab wo sinus opening karke ya kaise bhi wo nikal jayega but if it's large then it requires surgical removal okay if it is large it is going to require surgical removal because jo bone resorption process hoti hai wo bahut slow hoti hai to itna bada piece aap utne is is bharose rakh do ki ha bhaiya bone resolve ho jayegi apne aap uske liye aap nahi rakh sakte you have to surgically treat it also if not treated if your acute separative osteomyelitis is not treated it's going to convert to periostitis soft tissue abscesses and cellulitis severe forms and the complications or this initial complications which can occur firstly is your involucrum formation as i have told you ki new bone formation on the necrose bone and then pathologic fractures because the bone is very much weakened and destroyed because of this so there could be fracture because of any kind of trauma so this is all about your acute separative osteomyelitis now we'll quickly see the chronic separative osteomyelitis here and here in this video because it is also very short uh, you know it's a very short form of osteomyelitis and mostly it is related to the acute form so let's start with chronic separative osteomyelitis with chronic separative osteomyelitis now as i said it's in a way similar to the acute form so it may develop in an inadequately treated acute osteomyelitis okay either because of inadequate treatment of acute osteomyelitis uh, the resulting thing which develops is a chronic form of it or it may arise due to any dental infection without a preceding acute stage okay it can also be there ki seedhe dental infection se chronic form ho gaya hai rather than the acute form or rarely it is a complication of irradiation or radiation okay the clinical features are also similar to the acute form but they are milder for example the pain there is very severe but here it is not that much pain it is less severe the temperature is also mild elevation of the temperature is seen the leukocytosis of the increased wbc count was there marked here it is slightly raised slightly above the normal you can say the teeth may not be that loose or sore because sore sorry because in acute myelitis uh, acute separative osteomyelitis we saw that uh, the tooth was so uh, loose and sore that they interfered and the person could not even uh, chew or they could not like, there was difficulty in eating here the mastication is at least possible okay so there is no uh teeth like that looseness or soreness of the teeth also the acute exacerbations of the chronic stage can occur periodically matlab this stage ke acute exacerbations ho sakte hain with all the signs and symptoms similar to that of the acute form and the separation can perforate the bone overlying uh, bone and the overlying skin or mucosa through fistulous tract formation okay so obviously baat hai ki they can perforate the bone because that's a chronic form that's going to stay for longer time so it can it can perforate the bone also and it can perforate the skin and the overlying bone and can uh, or you can say they can come out of the skin in the form of fistulous tracts or sinus tracts okay talking about the treatment that is the same like it is your it involves a surgical treatment or drainage antimicrobial therapy so actually it is not that important entity if we talk about osteomyelitis okay it's a a slightly different variety of osteomyelitis slightly distinguishing from the acute form in uh, stake of the symptoms because they are milder otherwise it is almost similar to the acute form only so this was about the acute and the chronic separative osteomyelitis uh, stay tuned for further videos where we'll discuss the other types of osteomyelitis and if you enjoyed this video and you understood the topic then please like share and subscribe to our channel Also hit the bell icon so that you updated every time we upload a new video. Thank you so much.